Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about sword tails, their care, feeding, and breeding. This is a complete guide for beginner and advanced hobbyists. The tank I use to keep them in is a 16 gallon or about 60 liters. You can use just about any size. But the more of them you want to keep, the bigger the tank you'll need. You'll notice that I use plants. They're all live plants. It gives them some place to hide. And they like to interact with the plants also. As far as tank mates are concerned, you are, oh well, you can keep, or there are a number of species that'll get along with them. Just fine. They include uh, tetras, resboras, rainbow fish, angel fish, and a few other different types of species. I keep panda quarries. You can see them on the bottom right down there. And I also keep some ram's horn snails, and there are a few amano shrimp in there also. There are a variety of shapes sizes and colors of sword tails on the market today. There are three different species in this tank alone. I have the common green, you can see them up there, the type, the common green sword tail, there's the koi sword tail, and the red and white one, I believe it's called the kohaku uh, sword tail variety. This tank is uh, about a year old, or more than a year old, and I haven't changed much of anything except do some maintenance. So that brings me to maintenance. Maintenance, is, maintenance and care is rather easy. They're very hardy fish. Weekly water changes of about 30 to 50% is what I do and I recommend. Don't forget to use a water conditioner. Keep the water temperature around 72 to 80 degrees. Uh, 72 to 80 degrees or about uh, 22 to 27 or 8 Celsius. pH about 7 to 8. Test your water often. They enjoy uh, water movement or flow. I don't use sponge filters as you can see right there in the back. I use a hang on the back, a hang on the top, actually, filter. You can see it a little bit. That gives them water flow. And uh, as, uh, as far as feeding goes, feeding isn't too difficult. I'll show you what I use. That's down here. Let me just uh, show you. Oop, elevator going down. Okay, so I have a few different types of food that I use. Over here, these are frozen blood worms. This is Tetra, Tetramin, made by Tetra. It's a flake food. I usually grind it up and I put it into this little uh, spice bottle. I uh, grind it up with a chopstick actually, just open the lid, put the flake food inside and grind it up right inside of this little uh, salt and pepper you can use. You can get these in about uh, dollar stores and it works really well because these flakes are uh, pretty big, they're big size flakes. So I usually like to break them up smaller. I also use these, uh, this. This is called uh, Fun Tips. It's by Tetra. They are tablets that you can stick going up on the glass, on the inside of the glass, of course. They like to nibble on these. These can uh, give them something to uh, eat for a little while. They really enjoy these. I also use some uh, frozen dried fish food. This is frozen dried or freeze dried, not frozen, freeze dried fish food. This one's made by Comet. And I also have one made by Hikari. 
This is also freeze-dried bloodworms. For you more advanced fish keepers, you can th use things like live bloodworms. Instead of freeze-dried like this, try live. Try Daphnia, which are a type of sand... No, that's sand flea. They're actually a water flea. Or small little crustaceans. A, mm, what was the name of those? A calid Calinus? If I remember the name correctly. So we're going up. Let's see what the tank looks like again. Okay, so that's how... That's food. So, let's get into breeding. <clears throat> so, breeding is... Uh, rather easy. They, uh, you put male and female together and they do the work for you. That's a female Kohaku sword tail. Female has no sword and they're usually larger. Females can grow about six, six and a half inches. These are almost at max size. And males, which right there you can see the sword, that's how you can tell them, tell the difference between male and female. The males have swords and are a little bit smaller and skinnier. Females are more plump with no sword tail. Many people prefer the males. You can keep a male-only tank if you don't want to breed. They usually lay about, or they don't lay eggs, but they uh, will give about 20, sometimes all the way up to 80 fry at a time. But, uh... Be warned that they are live bearers and they do eat their fry. You need to have something like this. This is a breeding box that I do that I use to uh, scoop out the fry. Let me see if I can get a little bit of a close up. I say there are a few fry in there right now. You can see them swimming around. You need to scoop out the fry because they will eat their fry. So if you want to breed, sore tails are pretty easy to breed, but uh, hard to keep alive. You need to check up on your tank often. They uh, give birth every month, 26 to 30 days, if I, if I remember correctly. So check up in your tank. The trick is you don't know which female is giving birth at what time or which female gave birth. That's the hard part. It's not a trick. It's actually difficult to remember which female gave birth. Try to write it down if you can and find out which female did it. And then you can try to keep a better uh, record of when the next time they might uh, give fry. So you can be ready to change, not change. You can be ready to catch them and put them inside of your breeder box. So... How I find fry sometimes is when I'm doing water changes, all sudden fry that are hiding down here or up in the corners just all of a sudden pop out when I'm doing a water change. So I quickly scoop them up and I put them inside this breeder box that's inside the fish tank. Makes it easy. They can stay in the same water conditions. You can get the outside one if you want. You have to clean the inside of the breeder box where you keep the fry also. So that's a little bit extra maintenance, but it's not a big deal. If you don't know what to feed your fry, you can feed them a few different types of food. Let me see if I have something down here. I use something like this. This is actually made by Comet. It's almost powder food. This is a guppy food that's almost in powder form. So I use that. I use the flake food, really finely crushed. Or I use actually fry food also. I have fry powdered food. If I missed anything, let me know down in the comments below. I believe I covered just about everything from care to maintenance to feeding and breeding. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and sus subscribe and help the channel out. Thanks for watching. Again, have a good day.